feel here, the vibe this weekend is just like three years ago. We're back. We're back. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? Hamvention is in the books. Completo. I want to talk about my favorite things from Hamvention and also answer some of your questions. And I'll give you the, the most important ones right up front. I didn't catch COVID. Uh, no, Kenwood wasn't there, although I have some ideas why they might not have been. And where was all the new products? Well, let's talk about it. Now, this isn't a scientific poll, but everybody I talked to told me one of two things when I spoke with them about how they felt about Hamvention in 2022. And they told me one is that the vibe felt like 2019. And, and I agree, it, it literally felt like 2019 all over again, kind of like we took a two year long break, came back and it's the same Hamvention, that same great feel, that same fun time of hanging out with friends. I also noticed and, and heard from other people that the age bracketing, the age groups, they tilted a bit younger this go around. We saw a lot younger folks. We saw some more youth. We saw some people in that 25 to 35 year range. You know, that, that market demographic that we all talk about here on YouTube and in ham radio as being young people you'd like to attract to your hobby because they have income that they can spend. I will mention, though, that the official Dayton Hamvention Twitter put the attendance at 31,367 people, which really is just about a 1,000 off of where they were in 2019, which is pretty good. Now, I red-eyed on Wednesday morning, which gave me pretty much a full day on Wednesday, although I was pretty exhausted. That allowed me to check into the Airbnb, which... Airbnb, so let me make sure I get these right because we've got a lot of names here. Uh, Adam, K6ARK, Kyle, AA0Z, Charlie, Red Summit, RF, Carlos, Life at Terminal Velocity, obviously Frank, Tank, Radio. Uh, there is, uh, we had Mike, K and MRD stay with us one night and can't forget Mike, N8YO. The, the Airbnb was a, was a great thing, uh, nicely done by Kyle. I also highly recommend an Airbnb if you're so inclined and you're traveling with like a group, it made things a lot easier. 2022 though marked the first year of the Contest University having a new home, and it's the Hope Hotel, which is right next to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. In fact, it's um, if you don't make sure you turn off as you're going in, you're going to end up at the guard shack uh, for Wright-Pat. So just keep that in mind. You want to make sure you're following your directions to the letter. Otherwise, you'll meet the guys with Glocks and Berettas. Or is it SIG now? I don't know. Are they still using Berettas? I assume they are on Air Force bases. Okay, so Thursday's not a official day of Hamvention, but we did pack it full of stuff like the Voice of America tour. I hope you watched that video. Thank you, Jocelyn. Thank you, everybody at the Voice of America for making that possible. It was truly enjoyable. One of my favorite things we did um, all weekend there. But because I qualify as media, I went and picked up my media pass at the Hamvention Fairgrounds, and I did a little tour of the area and, and walked around a little bit. And hey, and here's some of the B-roll of that. Um, you probably will recognize a lot of the booths. Some were different. Some are not some are in exactly the same place as they were in 2019. And I will answer now one of the questions I got a lot in the live stream. Where's Kenwood? Kenwood wasn't here this year, and they weren't at Hamcation, and they were not at Huntsville Hamfest either. There is speculation abound, and I will throw my own two cents into this, and it's literally worth two cents what you're going to hear. It's Actually, it's worth even less than that. This is just opinion. My hunch. My hunch is that Kenwood, acknowledging that we do have a chip shortage, has backed away from the amateur market to focus on their land mobile market. They are still a player in land mobile. I believe that is their largest market share in that, in that area of radio service. And so that's what they're focusing on. That's my guess. Uh, what do you think? Post your comment below. Thursday does mark the, the day in which people start setting up their flea market tables. So I, I did walk around there a bit. There were... Um, how, how do I put this? And again, these, this is all just my personal feelings, right? Personal beliefs, personal feelings. Don't, don't be offended by any of this. In 2019, I saw many more QRP radios. I saw a Mountain Topper. I saw a KX2. I saw kit builds, you know, all kinds of old school QRP kit radios, little tiny guys. I saw very few of those this year. In fact, the only QRP radio I saw was when we were doing the live stream walkthrough. Hope you watched that too, with Adam. And uh, we saw a KX3, we saw uh, two 817s, sorry, 
Yes, 817s. Non-ND versions, original 817s. Those are the only QRP radios I pretty much saw the whole weekend. Although, I have to admit, I didn't get completely through the flea market. I got 75% of the way there. It was quite difficult to take the time to actually do that this year. You'll notice on some of these pictures that there's definitely a haze rolling in. There's a bit of an overcast cloud cover uh, that's that's, <laughs> that's surrounding us. It rained pretty hard Thursday night into Friday morning, and uh, that will lead us to the Voice of America. The Voice of America tour, again, just to restate, was one of my favorite things we did. If you have the opportunity, please go check out the Voice of America. Support this. Uh, living history is probably the wrong term because it's no longer being used in that capacity uh, as it once was. But you're literally seeing all the things that were used relatively recently and its actual historical impact, not just during World War II, but throughout the years through Vietnam and many other type of situations. I, I, I can't I can't encapsulate it into a tiny enough thing to give you the gravitas of meaning behind it. Please go watch that live stream. I think it does do a pretty good job. Not because of me, but because of the wonderful tour guides that we had. So thank you so much for doing that again. I appreciate it. After that though, we did end up going to Grainworks, partially because it's right next to the Voice of America, and also in part because they make a beer called the Cincinnati Liars, which if you remember is a quote that hit Hitler used to reference the voice of America and that they're lying and putting out their propaganda, etc., etc. That was a really fun meetup. Thank you for everybody that came out. I was still a tad exhausted from the traveling of the day before, but uh, I really did appreciate hanging out with all of you. It was a lot of fun. As we were wrapping up the meetup at Grainworks, we decided to all get in cars and ferry ourselves over to Four Days in May. Four Days in May is a different event, a simultaneous event that happens during Hamvention weekend. I don't know the history behind all of this. I don't know why they have it on the same weekend, but you know what? It kind of works out because you can kind of do a little bit of both. Four Days in May is a part of the QRP Quarterly Magazine. At least that's my understanding. They're the ones that fund the the event and set it up and run it and all that stuff. It's more of a talk-based event, meaning you, you go into a room with everybody else, you sit there and you watch a whole day's worth of talks. Um, Ashar Farhan, he spoke. I believe Hans from uh, QRP Labs spoke. Adam K6ARK did a talk where he was talking about his super micro transceivers, which he calls the choking hazard, among others, all built into little Altoids mini, can, uh, mini tins. At the end of every day, at least Thursday and Friday, is that right? Yes. They do a after hours event. Thursday's after hour event was vendor night. I loved this. All those kits that you see me build, live stream, you know, whatever. I went to go check those out. I picked up a ton of stuff. I got a QRP Labs QDX digital transceiver. I believe it's a five band QRP radio, but it's for connecting to a computer to do digital modes. Awesome. Well, day one. Day one of the show, everybody. We ready? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Morning. Looks like a good group out there already lined up. It's gonna be a big one. <laughs> this is the MCOM area right here. So make sure you come back if you, you know, a lot of the, the Go vehicles are pretty cool. The Rovers right there. Friday, the gates open at Hamvention. Uh, having Fridays the first day is actually kind of nice because not everybody is off of work yet, so you get kind of a, a ramp up to the chaos. Saturday is usually always the biggest day. Friday, though, a lot of people came up and said hi. In fact, I, I got stopped constantly during the weekend. I really do appreciate it. At the end of the day, that is one of the my most cherished things, and I, and I, I don't know how to put this in a, in a, in the right way. I'm just a guy. I'm not a celebrity. I make YouTube videos. I hope they help you. I'm not doing it for accolades and people coming up and saying hi, etc., etc. But a lot of you do, and it, it does mean a lot, and I appreciate it. Thank you so much. At least tells me that, that what I do is of value to some of you, and hey, that's good enough for me. So thank you. With that said, a lot of folks came up to me this weekend, and they wanted to say hi to Leia, my wife, who doesn't really go to these shows. We've got two boys, and they're in school during Hamvention. Sorry, guys. My wife's probably not going to be coming to Hamvention for a long time. 
Uh, but uh, many people mention her because of our podcast we do. So sometimes I will ask people if they mention the podcast, if they'll shoot a quick little video clip that I can show Leia. And that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna play some of those video clips. Hey Leia, it's Russ. You know who I am. I provide you maple syrup and honey. But anyways, I listen to the podcast, got to say hi to Jess, and having lots of fun. Right on. So here, let's get a, a look at your face there. Turn here. You got in trouble, you got in a fight with a maple tree and lost, right? Yeah. That <laughs> Hey Leia, this is KC8UIJ Austin, and I'm not allergic to bees. Thank you, Leah, for your podcast. <laughs> I listen to the podcast. <laughs> thank you. I'm Kevin, K3KTB, and I want to thank Josh for getting me into ham radio. Without seeing his video about the Baofeng, I never would have done it. Uh, it's a great starter radio, and I got my general and doing DX now, and of course everything balloons out of control with radios and antennas, so uh, it's a great hobby. If you're not in it now, definitely get into it. Oh, that's great. So first day of Hamvention, what do you do? Well, you run around and look for new products, and that's what I did. And this is where I will also answer the question I got, is where was all the new products? So here's my theory. and. Uh, Again, check me, call, hold me accountable. Although, again, two cents worth of a theory here. I think that just getting back to ham festing is, we're not gonna see that much new stuff. ICOM did release some new products and introduce their project, their super high frequency project that they're working on. Go watch that video if you wanna know more details about that. The The new products were, were fairly scant because if you think about it, ICOM, you had the super high frequency project, you had the PW2, amplifier, which is kind of already a fully fleshed uh, product. And then you have the ICT-10 from ICOM and the V2300. Totally wrong. And then you had the V3500. Mono band two meters, whereas the handheld is dual band. So there weren't a lot of new, aside from ICOM, what they released, which I think the, um, uh, I think most of the stuff's cool, but I'm really excited about what could happen with this high frequency project that they're working on. But not a lot of introductions, not a lot of new radios, new accessories, new kits, whatever, uh, coming out into the market. I think part of that is because we're just still dealing with chip shortages. We're dealing with supply line delays. We're dealing with access to parts being problematic. And listen, I'm not talking about just chips. I know everybody's like, chip shortage, chip shortage. When's that gonna die? Uh, it was John Crook during the YouTubers Ham Fest made a really good, good comment. He said, if you can't go and buy a PS5 in a Walmart whenever you want it, then we're still dealing with a chip shortage or supply chain problems, et cetera, et cetera. Beautiful, because Sony's like the, my camera's a Sony that I'm talking on right now. Um, beautiful point because it's totally accurate we are a niche within a niche hobby our access to some of these parts for the manufacturers is going to be a lot more strained than some of the larger players and so i have a feeling until that really starts to come back up to speed that we're going to see more of this and it's going to be difficult to have new products come out because one it takes design time and two you actually have to secure the, the parts to build said product that makes sense? I hope so. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm, there's my, here's my statement that I'll make. This year, not a lot of new products. As we get through this year and into next year for next Hamvention, we're gonna see more introductions. Next year in particular, we're gonna see some big stuff. At least that's my hunch. You know, there's my two cents. <laughs> But in, in true honesty, I don't get to see everything. I just don't have the time. And plus I get stopped and I do talks and all that other stuff. So I can't I can't go over the entire show with a fine toothed comb. But I did find a couple of interesting things that probably are not new to you, but they are new to me. The Pete Bros Ultimeter Weather Station, they advertise APRS ready, and I want to put that to the test because I don't have an, a an APRS weather station. I'd like to, um, just so I can tell people, no rain, uh, no humidity, and it's hot, and probably a little wind. Uh, and then just do that 365 days a year. Welcome to California, done in California. RF Kit's power amplifier was there as well, which I thought was pretty interesting. I am um, starting to go down the road of looking at this RF kit, looks pretty interesting. I may take a look at that in the future as well. Uh, almost directly across from ICOM and, and actually directly across from the Golly booth was the W5YI booth where Gordo was at. Gordon West was there signing little certificates, writing them out for people, ringing bells for people that had taken their tests. And I hung out with him uh, both on Friday and Saturday. Yeah, it was about 
about a good time to talk about logistics, human logistics. You gotta eat, right? And about midday Friday, everybody starts heading towards the central area, call it the picnic area within the Xenia Fairgrounds. There are a couple of different types of food at Hamvention. There is the traditional fair food, corn dogs, um, nachos, you know, that kind of stuff. But then there's some more interesting niche food items. The one that stood out to me was the Louisiana Grill Bourbon Chicken. Very good. I had one. I don't remember what day it was, but I had one, and the line was always really long. People seemed to really enjoy it. There was also a gentleman cooking barbecue. He was way off by the swap meet. First day, I got a pulled pork sandwich from him. Really good pulled pork sandwich. So now I'm not going to try to remember which all booths were in which building because I'm going to quickly prove myself a liar because I'm not going to remember everything identically. But uh, Bagali Keys is always a really funny booth for me. This year, they had really big plastic dividers put up so that, you know, obviously people talking uh, to Bruna and some of the other folks that were there, Bruna Bagali, uh, that they wouldn't just be, you know, breathing all over them, which turned out to probably be a good thing uh, with all the COVID that was around. But it, it's such a cool booth because you could just have, you hear this cacophony of noise because there are people just constantly coming up and working those keys. They're all hooked up to oscillators. And so people are literally testing out, uh, out testing out these keys. Just beautiful 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 keys and nobody's surprised by me saying this everybody knows how good their keys are i will mention it because i did this on friday and saturday but there is an mcom trailer slash vehicle parking lot area it's right as you're coming in the front gate for hamvention to your right i highly recommend you check out that area and check out those vehicles even if you're not that in to MCOM, you can kind of see a lot of really cool ideas for portable ham radio by looking at what they've done. Very, very impressive stuff. I loved the ham radio emergency bus that they had set up. It was really, really nice. But everybody there have, has really interesting setups. The Rover was there, um, a couple of trailers that were worth note. And it's really the antenna systems that I'm always looking out for and how they mount them. And there's no doubt, you know, a lot of ingenuity and a lot of thought went into them. So good job. Somewhere after the show closed, but before we went off to our next thing, we decided to do the Dayton special the thing that so many people have wanted me to do for a while and try skyline chili okay yeah, i got it okay here we go skyline chili it's better than the can chili that's for sure no nope. best fast food chili that's hard i don't know if i can answer that one I gotta have the five way to maybe decide, but it's good. I got a five way, small, and a coney, just a regular coney. Cheese, chili, the whole the whole nine yards. The hot dogs are weird, guys. I don't know what to tell you about those hot dogs. They're flesh colored for my flesh colored for some reason. I don't get it. My hot dogs don't look like that. And, uh, they're all right. Uh, a lot of people said the conies are their favorite. I definitely thought it was good. I think I needed more chili on mine personally. Now, my five way, by the way, that's uh, how I've had it, not at Skyline, but here at home. I appreciate that's not the same. Chili's great, cheese is great. I think it was just the preparation. Mine was really wet, like there was a lot of water. I don't know that the spaghetti got strained off completely, um, but hey, those are my thoughts on Skyline. Good stuff, I like Skyline. I know a lot of people don't. I don't understand that exactly why, but there you go. Uh, we all left, went back to four days in May. Four Days in May on Friday has a homebrew night. And it's it's literally like, a, it's kind of like an awards a contest, if you will, a competition where everybody puts out their homebrew gear in different categories and the other hams vote on which one was the best. This is great, uh, it's an individual, and by the way, a lot of these names are new to me. I haven't met most of these people before, so. I apologize for not knowing your call sign and uh, really remembering. I should have taken more pictures of call signs and names and whatnot, so I apologize. There was a beautiful Parasect radio that was part of the scratch built, so components all made by the ham, um, at least, you know, the non capacitors, resistors, that kind of thing, but all sourced and built uh, themselves. The Parasect radio was, was beautiful. Uh, everybody really focused on that one and, and spent a lot of time looking at it. But the standout winner at the homebrew night for me was the bug that was built by WB9LPU. This is uh, just a masterwork of ma material engineering. Or if you like it. 
close together. Yep. Wow. And it, it maintains that ratio then as you change the speed. It'll still have the proper ratio between elements. Wow. And that's that slow that's impressive. Yeah, that's, that's worth about five words a minute. And it can go to Wow, that's cool. Spacing and everything stays the same. Right. Ham cube. That's pretty good. And just ham ingenuity. The the interesting thing about this bug is that it's kind of self-contained, but um, it can actually be used tilted upside down. I don't know why you necessarily do that, um, but he demonstrated it and yeah you can you can pick it up while keying and, and move it around which means it, it doesn't have to be centered stably on a table oftentimes like a bug does have to, uh, has to be he has a leg mount that it slides into so you could actually walk around or more accurately drive or you know be at your station and just key away and it could also it can slide a little bit left or right and it's not going to affect it really really cool the the workmanship that went into it i was i was very very impressed and i it was definitely a show favorite i don't know if he won like best in show, but I'm I'm sure he at least won his category that he was in. Yeah, so that's a that's Friday. Not even done yet. Wrapped up four days in May. Went over to the Super Suite, the contest Super Suite, and we got to watch the Spurious Emissions. Want to get the names of the band right? So uh, Ward Silver on mandolin and vocals, Kurt Pickering, Scott Robbins, Sean Cutsko, and Nancy Livingston. Uh, Nancy, wow. A really good job with the Janis Joplin cover. You you absolutely killed it. Uh, I also like Duffy's Farm, and there was a cover of uh, Space Oddity. Now I appreciate the Spurious Missions have been around for a, a while, uh, and this was kind of a reunion concert, if you will. But it was fantastic. I I, I yeah. Great job, guys! It was it was beautiful, wonderful. I won't be playing any um, audio from it because it's it's covers of, of famous songs, and I'm not trying to get another uh, slap from uh, some music that was played on some of my videos recently because of Hamvention. All right, so that's Friday. Rolling into Saturday. Who man? So Saturday's the big day. Everybody's home from work, school, all the flea market tables are set up. So you got to actually do another round through the flea market. You know, you got to do it right when it opens, which is what I did, uh, but you need to hit it again because there's some tents that are going to be new, new product that's there because other hams will bring product to tables that are already there from clubs or whatnot. So always go twice, at least twice, Friday and Saturday to the uh, flea market. I found a cool booth here. This is a club. What's their club? KD8LBS, they make these uh, badges, ham radio badges. You can get your logo printed on there or they'll put the Hambench logo. And then on the back side, they have your license info. Is it something you need? Not necessarily, but it's kind of handy if you're doing a parks on the air or whatever and somebody comes up and asks you know, what you're doing, um, you can show that. It doesn't hold any, you know, gravitas other than, you know, it just makes it easy for people to know what you're out there doing. Anyway, cool, go check them out. One of my first stops Saturday was to the Ham Radio Outlet booth where Bob Heil was hanging out with Ash from Heil Sound. So we got to hang out for a little bit and talk, take a picture. A lot of people came up to say hi as well. And uh, I, I figured I'll let Bob do his thing. He was there for a reason and lots of people wanted to say hi to him. So I got in, got out, and uh, it was really nice to see both of them. Midday Saturday, I had the honor of recording Steve K5ATA learning manager over at the ARRL did a great talk and I was allowed to record it. That was about two o'clock on Saturday. Thanks for letting me do that. And the video is live on that. That deserves a look at, particularly if you're interested in bringing uh, younger people into our hobby. Uh, got it down to under an hour, I think. Uh, yeah, just under an hour. And hopefully there's some, some good uh, pieces of info there. But let me know, post in the comments over on that video what you think. Something that I think deserves mentioning because it's a really cool aspect of our hobby is that there's three large shows that we have, right? Hamvention being the biggest, then Hamcation's kind of right below them, and then Huntsville's below them. Uh, so Mark Brown runs Huntsville, Michael Colley runs Hamcation, and Michael Coulter runs uh, 
Hemvention. Did I say that right? I hope I said that right. Anyway, so Mark Brown and Michael Cauley, they're all there. Like the whole entourage is all at the show walking around, um, saying hi to people. And they usually have booths uh, at Hamvention. So everybody kind of works together. It's really cool. And so I ran into Mark Brown. Thanks again, Mark, for saying hi. Thanks. A couple of us are here from Huntsville yep. to promote the Huntsville, Alabama Ham Fest in August. Always the third weekend in August. Uh, we are right beside the Orlando guys in the uh, in the building four. And I'll and be in. I'll be in Huntsville. You'll be there too. That's and right. a lot of a lot of the other YouTubers will be there. We we really appreciate the the coverage and and the the, the work you guys do to promote all of our events. And, we love uh, it. <laughs> the Dayton the Dayton guys have been wonderful. The feel here, the vibe this weekend is just like three years ago. We're back. We're back. <laughs> And the crowd is good. Uh, I don't know if, it, they, of course, it'll be a while before they announce the attendance here. Yeah. But uh, it feels just like three years ago. Yep. And we're, we're excited to be here. It's it's a lot of fun. It's good to see you, as it's always. It's good to see you, too, Josh. We'll be, in, we'll be, we'll be hanging out again soon. Thanks, man. <laughs> Thanks again. Bye-bye. On Saturday, some folks got wise to my shenanigans. I brought a couple of uh, pounds of Give It The Beans coffee with me, and I basically told people, come up and, and give me a trade, make me a trade offer for the coffee and and no this is not supposed to be like dollar for dollar it was a funny thing so anyway here's one of them i have some coffee you said you like coffee i do like coffee. i said make me a trade on the discord and the first person to basically the first person to come up with a trade would get it you started out at, at 50 dollars, which is just insane the coffee is not worth that but you, you're what are you offering now i'm offering an exclusive pass for William Mo Quinn from Flex Radio that uh, for for a Hamvention 2022 okay. an exhibitor pass. Okay. Uh, he was unfortunately not able to make it because he is sick. Okay. Um, but I think that uh, it is a uh, fine trade for coffee. <laughs> I don't know about fine trade, but I definitely signed up for it. So okay, here we go. There you go, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the trade. <laughs> All right. You're the first person to take me up on that, so there you go. You got it. Amazing. Thanks so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, and let me know how you like it, too. Yeah, of course. Thank you. So for those that attended Hamvention in 2022, they said it was more of a standard showing for Dayton and Xenia at that time of year because it did rain. It rained both on Thursday, Friday, and Friday night and Saturday. On Saturday, about an hour before the show ended, we started getting notifications over the PA saying that a storm was blowing through. And I, I've i never really experienced this because it, it actually scared me a little bit. I, I was like, this is like tornado country, right? Should I be worried? There were people that just boned out. They were like gone. Once they said, once that PA came up saying storm warning, um, small sized hail, they were gone. And so the show just kind of emptied out for that last hour, which was kind of nice because I could run around and take some video and stuff like that. All right. Now it is off to the troll pub to hang out with hopefully a lot of you. Hopefully a lot of you folks are going to show up. I uh, had a really good second day. I have a lot of thoughts probably at the end of this video. Future me will talk about my thoughts on all this. Yeah, it, it feels like in many ways that we all just took a, a long sleep for two years and now we're back again. And uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun, but I've got more to talk about on that one. So I guess let's carry on with the rest of the weekend and then we'll, we'll wrap it up with a little chat. The only problem though is that by the time I got everything all together to leave the show, get in the car and boogie on down to the Troll Pub, which was our meetup, I was behind everybody else. I think I was one of the last people to get there actually. And by the time I got there, it was fully raining hard. I think I had to run maybe, you know, 100 feet uh, from my car to the door for the Troll Pub. And by the time I got there, I was completely soaked. I forgot to pack my rain jacket and boy howdy, I got absolutely dumped on. Who's all here? Pretty much everyone. Hey, I got wet. Oh no. I got real wet. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, me too. Hey. Little damp. Little damp. How's it going, man? As far as the troll pub goes though, 
fantastic meetup uh, again. Kyle A zero Z, thanks for calling in that reservation and and securing us a spot. The spot we secured was not big enough. There was we were like packed in like tuna cans. Thankfully, it stopped raining long enough for us to go outside on the patio and kind of spread out a little bit. So we kind of had two groups. It was a patio group and then an inside the bar group. Uh, all told, a lot of us chipped in money to kind of keep a tab going. We were told at the end of the night, shout out to one of the best bartenders I've had to deal with um, or had to be served by in a long time, Tom, that we had over $2,000 was our bar tab. Yeah, it was, it, there's food too, of course, but it was a lot of drinks flowing and, and everybody had a really good time. So thanks everybody that came out. Now, Sunday's kind of an odd duck for me at, at Hamvention. It's kind of a cleanup day for me. And I, probably the other creators would tell you this too. Basically how I treat Sunday is when you talk to people, they'll mention things. And in fact, that's that's what I like to do is I like to ask you, hey, what were your favorite things that you saw uh, during the show? Did you buy anything? Did you find anything interesting? What's new? What's cool? Et cetera, et cetera. Sunday, I kind of use as my day to go around to booths that I hadn't stopped at or, or just didn't know were there and try and shoot a video with, get B-roll on, something like that. So I call it the cleanup day because it's not very long. The show wraps up at uh, 1 p.m. And by the time you roll out of bed after two days of staying up late, waking up early, Sunday, I'm a little I'm a little slow to rise and get the ball moving. Um, but anyway, got there and did some cleanup. That's where you saw the Arrow Antenna video, uh, Hope and Shack in a Box. And I've got a couple other videos I'm working on that actually I'm going to need to take some time with. It's not just going to be a interview. I think there needs to be a deep dive done on explaining what's going on with some of this stuff uh, that at least we're hearing about and talking about in regards to antennas. So look forward to that. So that's pretty much my thoughts on Hamvention. An incredibly packed weekend. I, I, I came home exhausted. I, I barely slept because there was so much to do both at night and during the day. You are all fantastic. Thank you so much for coming up and saying hi and uh, just being involved in the videos and commenting for those of you that couldn't make it. Sorry you couldn't make it. I will be going to Huntsville. Um, very excited about Huntsville. I, I'm um, Huntsville for me, I feel like I'm a little bit more relaxed because I'm not so pressed to get to the show and back from the show and back and forth, blah, 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 and drive all over the place because it's right in the hotel. Best part about the uh, Huntsville is that you just stay in the hotel, eat breakfast, right into the show. Bang. The best. Love it. Anyway, those are my thoughts. I would love to hear your thoughts below. For everybody I missed, everything I missed, apologize. I don't even know how long this video is going to be. I hope under an hour. But, man, um, it, it's not because I don't like you. It's because, man, there's just so much to talk about and not enough time to get it all done. A couple more videos on this, and then we're going to put Hamvention to bed as we look forward to new interesting videos and things that I have been meaning to get to for a while, edited videos that I just need to post, etc. So uh, the break, if you will, of Hamvention, there's like a little week or two there where we got to cram all this content out, is over. For those of you that are watching this immediately after Hamvention, I hope you enjoyed the, the YouTube Hamfest, and the link will be in the description for all of that stuff. I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up, consider subscribing, clicking that bell, and I'll talk to you later. See ya. Don't move.